Welcome to this video for high physics for the R dynamic universe unit on looking at gravitation. And this video in particular is going to look at um, the Cavendish boys experiment and some effects of using uh, gravi gravity to accelerate spacecraft and the a little bit on the role of gravity in the formation of stars and planets in the solar system. So um, scientist Henry Cavendish carried out an experiment nearly 200 years ago, over 200 years ago, um, to determine the universal gravitational constant. Um, he had a laboratory in his back garden. He was quite a wealthy man. And uh, he it consisted of the equipment that you can see there. So what you have is you have um, a string a fiber or a wire that hangs from the ceiling and on the end of this wire is a bar and on the end of the bar are two little balls mass little m and attached to that is a mirror as well and underneath this bar that's hanging from the ceiling is another bar which has two bigger balls of a greater mass. And Cavendish used lead because lead's very dense, so you could have fairly reasonable masses in not a particularly large size. And what you do is you move the big balls M closer to the little balls little M. And the effect of that is there is a tiny force between those two and it will cause the wire to twist because there's a force of attraction between the big ball and the little ball on both ends. So you've actually got twice the force because you've got the force pulling one ball towards the one big ball and then the force of the other little ball on the other end of the bar towards the other ball. And you can measure how much this wire twists and through some other experiments, you can work out that if it twists through a particular angle, um, it's a particular amount of force that is required for that. Um, there is a mirror on this bar with a light shining at it so that you can measure the amount of angle that this has twisted through. So a light is shone onto the mirror and then it moves, shines onto a scale. And then as it twists around, the light moves along the scale so you can work out how much it happens to be twisted by. And through careful experimentation of measuring the masses, which stayed fixed, and measuring how much it changed, um, Cavendish was able to work out a value of big G, which was really very close to the accepted value just now, just within 2%, even though he did his experiments over 200 years ago. Um, there's a video you can watch that tells you a little bit more about this particular experiment. Um, it has been known that this description of this experiment and some of the details have been given to you as a, as a question to work out uh, based on the forces. So let's um, talk a little bit about something quite different in terms of gravity assist. So uh, space agencies accelerate their spacecraft by using the gravitational fields of planets to accelerate them. This saves on the amount of fuel that they need and so they can accelerate by making an approach to the planet and then uh, accelerating away. They need to be going at a particular angle to ensure not being captured by the planet or the moon that they're using for this process. Um, Apollo, th Apollo 13 used this, so you may have seen the uh, movie. And um, what happened there was Apollo 13, it was it's damaged by some explosion and they planned to land on the moon, but they aborted the mission to land on the moon because they wanted to safely return the astronauts home. Um, there was limited amount of fuel and so they used the gravitational field of the moon to turn around the ship towards the earth and there's a clip from the video 
that you can have a little look at in terms of talking about this process. Um, <clears throat> many of the probes also use gravity assist to add energy so they can reach uh, where they want to go more easily. And we're going to look in particular at a probe that was sent to, to Jupiter called Galileo. And what it did is it flew past Venus and used the slingshot gravity assist effect uh, a couple of times and around the Earth's gravitational field to get enough speed to reach Jupiter. And what we can see is the particular uh, direction of the orbit that were there here. So we can see that it's starting off Earth at the beginning and it flies past Venus the first time and then it flies past Venus a second time. Notice that it's going to a closer approach. So there's dotted lines for the orbits of the Earth and the orbits for the Venus and the darker lines are for the particular Galileo probe. So as it accelerates, it then moves into a further outer orbit, has another slingshot um, around. They sent it to go and look at an asteroid as well. And then it's slingshot around looking, taking a look at another asteroid on the way to Jupiter. And so even though it's not the most direct route from Earth to Jupiter, it was one that meant that they didn't need uh, a huge amount of fuel on board to, to power the spacecrafts. And they can also look at other objects on there on the way to the journey there. Um, gravity forms a fundamental role in the universe. Gravitational forces are at the heart of formation of stars on the solar system. So the clouds of dust and gas eventually attract together and those dust and grass attracts together. And when the mass is great enough, then we can get the nuclear fusion reactions that are caused in stars. Using technology like the Hubble Space Telescope, um, we're able to look at nebula where stars are born and see the uh, birth of stars in effect. And the new James Webb Telescope that should be operational uh, within the next decade should tell us more about that. Okay, so these clouds of gas and dust, these are nebula, and eventually the gravitational attraction pulls the hydrogen atoms together. And once you get to a critical density of hydrogen atoms, then you get nuclear fusion reactions taking place and the birth of stars. Planets, asteroids, other objects are also formed in a similar way by gravity pulling together small parts of dust and together and the uh, electrostatic forces make them stick together to form clusters and stick together to cause rocks and then they have gravitational forces between each other so eventually gets planets. Um, this whole process is known as aggregation. There are a couple of videos here that you can watch that tell you a little bit more about the formation of planets and stars and our solar system. Okay, so we've briefly talked about the Cavendish boys experiment to determine big G and the slingshot effect and the formation of the solar system and stars by the gravity causing the aggregation of matter.